Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain why blood sugars spike after certain types of exercise and how to prevent it. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Trevor from Home in the Range, where I share easy to use tips to help you navigate your diabetes journey more successfully. I've been living with type one diabetes for 42 years, worked as a diabetes educator, and raised two type one kids, and simply have a mission to share everything that has helped me along my diabetes path. Please remember this is my journey and not medical advice. So if you've been searching for tips or hacks on how to keep blood sugars in range when doing certain types of exercise, or reasons why those sugars spike after certain types of exercise, you've come to the right place. I've spent 42 years figuring out the best tips and hacks that work for me, and in this video, I'm going to share my top six. So make sure you stay to the end, where I tell you my secret way to correct blood sugars after certain types of exercise. So let's jump in. Tip number one, don't believe everything you hear. When I first started formally exercising or hitting the gym and doing other activities like boxing, I was following the advice of the times, which was feed the activity, regardless of the type of activity. I would hit the gym to only lift weights and I'd carb up thinking that my blood sugar would drop. I soon discovered that weight training actually caused my blood sugar to go up and that not every activity needed carbohydrate beforehand. So don't believe everything you hear or read. We are all different and activity will affect each one of us differently. Which brings me to the next tip. Tip number two, test, test, test. Over many years, I figured out what the different activities do to my blood sugar. This was difficult prior to continuous glucose monitors. When I used just a testing meter, I would check before exercise, during exercise, and after exercise. Each type of activity to figure out what these activities did to my blood sugar. I would look for trends and patterns over time, and I'd ultimately create formulas to use for future events. So when I got my hands on my first meter, this was a major game changer. I discovered that high intensity activities caused my blood sugar to spike and not drop, and immediately changed my approach. I stopped the pre-workout carb loading, channeling down on bananas and shakes and whatever else, thinking I would drop low. I also realized how to manage other activities, like walking, biking, any type of cardio activity. So learning that these aerobic activities, lower intensity activities needed constant fuel, I figured out how much fuel to take for each 15 minutes of activity. It's not a perfect science, but I get it right the majority of the time. This came from testing, recording, and creating repeatable methods for future events. And the reason I keep out the details of how much carb I eat, because we're all different. I don't wanna mislead anybody. So let's get to the next tip. Tip number three, try to exercise at the same time. Diabetes loves routine, and I've said this in my previous videos. I wish it didn't, but it does. My Saturday morning workouts are the most challenging because I typically work out in the evenings most of the week. I get it right most of the time, but this took a long time to figure out. Why? Well, most of us in the mornings are dealing with insulin resistance in the waking hours. I find this is really difficult for me especially. So this makes sugar levels really unpredictable. So those early morning exercise sessions are tricky, and for me, my sugars sometimes stay in range, and other times, due to insulin resistance, they don't, especially if it's a higher intensity workout in the mornings. So if you choose mornings, that's awesome. I admire that. But apply tip number two. Test and shoot for the same intensity until you figure it out. Then try different types of activity until you figure those out. I say limit the number of things that can mess up your blood sugars when trying to figure things out. So try something for a week, figure out the method, and then repeat. Tip number four. Do the right exercises at the right time based on your blood sugar trend. So as I mentioned in my other videos, if you can start out in a good range, change and stress on the body and diabetes is less unpredictable. So get that blood sugar in a good range, if possible, before hitting that exercise session. I often show up at the gym wanting to lift weights or box, but change my workout due to my CGM trend, my continuous glucose monitor trend. If I've struggled with higher sugars pre-workout, I know that doing an intense bout of activity will only make matters worse and make it really hard to get the sugar down later. So if I hit the gym, I do the cardio first and hop on the bike, treadmill, elliptical machine until my blood sugar starts to trend down and do an ideal range. And then I hit the high intensity stuff. I also do the reverse. If I show up to the gym and my CGM is trending in the lower end of range, I hit the weights first or I box first. I do those high intensity activities first and then I finish off the workout with cardio. This works for me, but sometimes nothing works out. And for those cases, I use my secret tip, which I will share at the end of this video. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and leave a comment about how exercise or activity affects your blood sugar. I'll read every comment, let you know what I think. Now for tip number 
five. Understanding insulin on board and food on board. I try to work out with minimal insulin on board, as this for me means one last thing for me to worry about. But I don't do marathons or super long bouts of activity, so my fuel requirements are minimal. I do make sure to eat three nutritionally dense meals per day, especially on those days where I, where I do those intense workouts in the evening. It prevents me from gassing up. Definitely not a good thing when you're in the boxing room. If I know I'm going to be active, as I am on weekends, I will reduce meal boluses by about 20 to 30%, depending on the day and activity. I try to ask myself, what's the plan over the next four hours? So if I go on a spontaneous walk, I just speed the activity. Tip number six, super quick correction method. If all else fails, it may be necessary to correct during or after your exercise session. This will also require you to know how much to take and the use of tip number two, a lot of trial and error. I often use this method at the boxing session. I usually head right to class right after work. So if I'm running a bit on the high side, I don't have a lot of time to get that blood sugar in good range before I start that high intensity class. This would also apply to any intense activity. Judo, wrestling, rugby, CrossFit, whatever your jam is. So test for yourself, of course. I prevent the high before it gets out of hand. I know from testing that immediately after the class is over, my CGM starts to trend up. So I pause halfway through the hour-long class and I take a shot of insulin, a bolus. So it prevents the post-exercise sugar spike. If I can't pause during the class and if I'm high at the end, which is usually the case, I take an injection into my left shoulder muscle, bringing the sugar down quickly. This is my method and not recommended by the medical profession. Like I said, it's my journey and not medical advice, but that intramuscular injection gets my sugar down quickly and effectively, and it does work for me. So even though we were told exercise generally lowers blood sugar, as you can see, that's not always the case. So please check out my latest videos here. If you don't want to miss the next video, please like the channel and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and wishing you all happiness and home in the range blood sugars. See you next time.